All right. So, over the weekend, I wrote a small script. Well, it was a, actually a program. It was in C. That would generate shells, SVGs for shells, based on a few parameters. You input the width, height, and depth of the opening, wood thickness, number of shells, and the uh, thickness of the cutter. And I'll explain why that is when uh, when we're looking at the actual. Uh, file on the shaper. And it outputs the shapes. So let's uh, have a look at what that'll look like. So <clears throat> let me aim the camera down. Let me get it off the uh, tripod actually so it's easier to get a good look at the screen. We're a little stuck there. Hold on. All right. Got a pretty good view of the screen there. I'll lean my hand so that it's stable. All right. And that's the whole workspace. And you see I have three shells. I'm One of them is highlighted because I'm currently on it because I just placed it. And the two walls. So it generates slots on both the shelves and the walls. Oh, and you also... There was one more parameter, the uh, amount it hangs over by. So I made that 0.15 inches. You could make it zero to make it flush, but I, I wanted a little extra just sticking off. It might come out a little delicate, though, and it might break off because I made it kind of thin. But we'll see. But zoom back in, and let me come over here. Um, let's find... Oh, here we go. Yeah. So that's... Because the bit is round and you want... Uh, to cut out that entire rectangle for the slots so that they will slot in properly, you need to go in a little extra here and here. So you give it the width of the bit and it will go in an extra, so the uh, the depth is five inches, so it goes five inches plus one half the diameter of the bit. And then creates that little notch that's one by one half because that'll be hidden anyway when it's all slotted together. So, there's not a lot of tape to look at here, is there? Hmm, that's a problem. I might have a hard time cutting out this one shelf. The other two shouldn't be an issue. And of course the walls shouldn't be an issue. So we can get right into that, have a look. So right now, all the uh, parameters are hard coded in. I have to recompile every time I want to change the uh, dimensions of the shells because it was just a proof of concept, just a little thing I wrote quickly in a couple hours over the weekend. Mostly just working out the math for this kind of shelf. Eventually, I intend to develop in, into a more uh, feature rich application which will allow me to build different kinds of shelves and I just input the parameters as I'm running it rather than having to code them in. But so far it gets the results I was looking for for today. I needed a shelving unit for my uh, spools of filament upstairs and this would be perfect for that that way instead of 12 stacked straight up on top of each other it stacks of four so that if I want one out of the middle I don't have to move as many other spools to get to it or if I want the one on the bottom I don't have to move all 11 other spools off of it first why I'm not just making shelves with 12 slots for all 12 spools is because I don't have enough extra height for the thickness of the wood. So anyway, we're going to get right into cutting this. 
should be able to do it in two passes. Let's move the vacuum. All right. This should be a quick one today. Just a quick cutting out. Got plenty of tape help. Okay, we can get over here safely. seems to be in the wood. Okay, good. I was worried I made that one too far back. Uh, this is saying it's not seeing a lot of tape, which is weird because there's a ton of tape here. Maybe I need to add more tape. Here. Well, we'll see. We'll cut the first one out. So let's start here in this corner. So we'll go to cut. Never did a Z-touch after changing the bits, so let's do that. All right. Now, let's come over here. Uh, depth. Let's make it point, point three five for now. cuts. Although last week it could have been chalked up to the fact that I was suspending tape over a grid and the tape could be dipping and waving and whatnot <clears throat> as the cutting has happened. This week though it would be because I'm using two separate pieces of wood and every tiny little motion of this piece of wood with respect to the other and it only moves like a fraction of a millimeter but as this one is moving slightly with respect to this one it causes little discrepancies in the tape causing the cuts to wave a little bit now <clears throat> if I was making this for someone else I uh, would definitely get one single piece of wood and I'd be more careful about tape placement. <laughs> care about none of that but let's get one of these pieces out okay here it is complete and this is actually this 0.15 inch little tongue here somehow ended up being just thick enough that it isn't snapping off although you can see a little little wave cut out of it here But once it's all snapped together, I think it should look okay. And the back, oof. Yeah, you can see the waviness in the back. But I'll give that a sanding down, it'll be fine.
need one of those uh, drum cylinders to just put it on rather than having to use the orbital for something like this. But <clears throat> since it's the same thickness for the walls and the get into there for the walls and the shelves I should be able to snap the, sh the the walls together just to show how they slot in if I could get the other wall out and look how thin this waste wood is this is the waste wood right here I'm breaking it away to get it out of the way Very efficient project this time. Yeah, alright. So now I should be able to get behind this. Scoop it up. Scoop bitty whoop. Uh, it'll let me. Oof, this one's in good. I need something flat to stick under there. Maybe a mount to whack it. So the tape comes loose. And the more we shift it forward and back, now I can wedge something in there. Actually, I can use the, uh, use the chisels. Instantly. So you just... Hmm. Ah, there we go. Pry it up. Chisel is a pry bar. Oh! Gotcha. Alright. So we got our walls already. What time is it? We only are we really only 20 in? We're really only 20 in. This is a quick one. So, as you can see, they slot together nice, and that's something. Now, that'll wind up breaking the overhangs, so let's do here. There we go. Isn't that something? It's got a little play because it's... Uh, like 0.66 to 0.67 thick, and I made the gaps 0.68. That's fine. Once you get a couple in place, it'll hold it nice and straight. So we can put these off to the side. The, that's the top. That's the bottom. Because I want it to sit like that with just the overhang up above. I could have made it the other way, said it, they'd act as feet, but, you know, I don't want feet. So, I'll put these off to the side for now. It's coming along great. And again, once, uh, once I make the software for generating these more robust, be able to make all sorts of types of shelving units on demand. Ooh, excuse me. And that'll be quite nice. <clears throat> so. I was thinking since I gotta stack them this way anyway, I'm gonna do it from this side. So I'm gonna have to replace the, the shelves. Place three more shelves down on the workspace. And I want to get this junk wood out of here with this other piece out. And I want to rescan because I don't want to deal with an unnecessary jittery extra piece of tape. That way the shelves themselves won't be wavy, hopefully. If they are, then I gotta troubleshoot, because that means something else is going on. So let me get this the rest of this piece of wood out. <coughs> that was used to make the walls so I'm only dealing with the shelf wood and let's 
can go in the scrap heap. I eventually have to sort out the scrap heap. I'm sure you can imagine I have a lot of sorted little pieces of scrap wood that are too small to make a project out of. There's not enough space for the shaper and shaper tape to fit. It's a little odd pieces. But I can uh, improve the tape health over here by deleting this workspace. Throwing down some of this, get the knife. Throw a little extra down towards the end here. Fragment and recycle this tape. I'm gonna see if I can get away with not using any new tape this week. Still got some up on the wall. All the tape that wasn't cut up from uh, last week's project went on the wall, and I got three strips left. All the rest of it was already put on this board. All the tape on that board came from the wall, which came from that project. This board was just already taped from these other projects that were cut out of it the heart and the laurel yanny. Oh, you know what might be causing the waviness in the lines? The bits of sawdust underneath the tape, causing lumps in it. Gotta make that tape flat, or it won't work right. Now, let's scan this workspace. And I'll have to find the sheath for my uh, chisel, because it's lost. I think I might have dropped it in the cabinet. When I'm cleaning up after, I'll worry about that. Okay, so, let's scan, new scan, start scanning. and I got really good tape health all the way up here. So, I should be able to place as many of these as I need. So let's go back into USB, shelves, and place. All right, that should be good here. Place them as far back as I can. Okay, I think here is good. Alright, design, no, design, import, USB, shelves. Oh, it's not going to fit though, across now. Shit, okay, cancel, uh, remove, remove, let's go here like this, okay, import, USB shelves. Okay, and we'll go here. Place. And hopefully that's still on the wood. Yeah, that's well on the wood. It's actually a little wasteful. Remove. Import. <laughs> Gonna be doing this over and over again. Okay, it's good practice, I guess, replacing. Okay. I think that's as far back as I can place it while facing in this direction anyway, so... It's gonna have to be here. And there. And that'll waste like an inch of wood. But yeah, import. USB. Shelves. Go again.
not a lot of tape held facing in that direction, but did what I had to do to make it work. Okay, and this should be good. And I'll just cut it facing this way, place it facing the other way, and then import and mitigate waste. I'll make the other one face this way. Put it here. Like so. Pretty snug and close. And that'll be the last one I cut because I don't want to lose the tape here that I need to cut the ones over here. So I'm going to have to start over in this corner and cut this one out, then cut this one out, then the one over here. <clears throat> so, ears and eyes, vacuum. filter gets screwed up in it and then it won't work until you open it up again and reassemble it. I really need a proper big vacuum. <clears throat> so anyway, let's get this piece out of here. Cut. Point three. Done. Okay. shelf. All right. So here it is. So we can stick it in and watch it fit. Oh, goodness. That is flush. Look at that flushness. Look at that. That is pure mess. This thing is made out of metal. Okay. Plug the other one in. And so far, we got one shelf and the walls to put them on. So I'm going to angle the camera a little bit so you can watch the progress as I build this thing. There we go. So you can see the shaper and you can see the shelves as they're being assembled. Yeah. 
even if I came up with the right formula that accounted for the amount of wood used, the amount of time it would take to cut out pieces of a given size, and given complexity, I could uh, automate a system for coming up with the, uh, the price of something like this. But that's way down the road. I'm not exactly open for business yet. I'm just building up the catalog at the moment. When the time comes, I hope things like this will be my bread and butter because it meets both of the criteria for an ideal project. Because the only other thing I made before this that was procedurally generated was this. The circles. And these were randomized circles generated using a script written in Processing 3. I then edited them a little bit in Inkscape and cut them out. But that's purely decorative. I also like I also prefer to make things that are functional. There's actually three criteria. Things that are functional, like the cabinet over here, that I keep the uh, <clears throat> router table on. That. That cabinet. And things that piece together rather than just being a single piece, because that can get boring. Those three criteria. So the cabinet met two. It wasn't procedurally generated. The A lot of the wall hangings I've been making lately, like the dog, the, the porg, the heart, meet none. They meet none. They're purely decorative. They aren't generated by any script, and they aren't functional. But I still make things like that anyway. I just prefer projects like this, because this meets all three. So this is what I would call an ideal project. Well, I suppose if it was aesthetically pleasing, that would be even better. And it's kind of plain. <laughs> but, you know, can't have everything. So.
just gonna have to. Hmm, I'm not sure what to do now. I guess I need some tape over here. So let me get some more tape off the wall. Tape wall. And throw it down here. Let's see if that helps any. Okay, update scan. So there's not enough tape left for this last cut. Hopefully that'll be enough to do it. We have enough tape now. Uh, no, not really. Let me get over here. We need more tape. Alright, we're gonna need some tape here so I can look over here with it to cut. So, yeah. Things are getting a little dicey at the end here. And I'm running out of wood to put tape on. So I'm going to have to update again. I hope it doesn't shift on me slightly and ruin the cut I made so far. prefer the tall tape. I was using the... What the hell happened here? Oh. Uh, uh, not to sand that down. I got a little thing sticking off of here from where it jerked away. hides the little notches really well. So the notches are made to be in line with what's being covered. You know, a standard dog bone is a circle on the corner and it sticks up in every direction. You know, if you look up dog bones in woodworking. But this just goes straight in along the uh, this line so it gets hidden completely when you pop the shelf in. Needs a little sanding, needs a little uh, cleaning up. Maybe it could be glued and clamped so that it stays straight, but I don't mind it wobbling slightly. It's a little wobbly. But that lets me warp it around my hand as I'm grabbing filament spools off the shelves. And if I uh, had made it to tighter tolerances, like if I had generated for 6, 0.66 rather than for 0.68, knowing that the wood itself is 0.66, it's pretty flush. It's pretty, pretty clean looking. You know, you give it a once over with the. Uh, 
the sander and it's good. So that's it. Calling it. End of my video. Where was that button last Thursday? Yeah. Well, anyway, goodbye.